hi people how are you all doing welcome and welcome back to the channel it is Cassandra here and I am back again with another video so this is tied to obviously this is like a Charlie Kirk's video because I think I'm getting I'm getting to that place where I think I'm like a fan of him right hmm anyways this is titled Hamas sympathizers yelling at facts okay this is gonna be spicy okay so I'm gonna be getting into this today obviously gonna be my first time and I want you all to work through this journey uh, through this debate with me so please do stick around and let's just hop right into the video who ran gaza up until 2005 I mean, it was yeah. Same thing. no israel did israel used to occupy the gaza strip 10,000 jews left gaza the idf totally withdrew why did israel do that you tell me. You're the one at the table. to pursue peace because they, they were promised a peace deal if they got out of gaza then Hamas took over as mayor of Gaza, and it's now a hot tub for terrorists, where there are thousands of rockets so every single the, month. Where was the peace that happened after they withdrew? Exactly. Israel signed a peace accord, and the PA violated it. But, so, so this is the way peace... Occupying territory. They weren't occupying. They got out. But you just said Israel occupied that territory Correct. in Gaza until they got out. So that's not... No, no, but they got out on a condition of peace. So they said, we will get our 10,000 Jews out of Gaza. So 10,000 Jews used to live in Gaza. Well, so, so who, who is Gaza's territory? Who's is that? Egypt. It's been, it's been Egypt for 2,000 years, okay? So, how, so since you're, you understand this, maybe, um, how did Israel win back that territory? Sinai, right, so in the 1967 war, they pushed back Egypt all the way to their borders, and so they, they gave up the Sinai Desert in pursuit of peace with Egypt. That worked. that worked. So then they kept the occupation of Gaza, which there's factories and rolling hills and vineyards, a lot of wealth there. There's two million people that live in Gaza, more or less. Okay. 10,000 Jews lived on the eastern skirt of Gaza. So in pursuit of peace, in the 2005 peace talks, Israel said, you know what? We want peace in, as a condition. We'll get out. If you guys have real peace with us, stop launching rockets, stop building terror tunnels, stop killing our children, all these sorts of things. Are you pro Hezbollah or? Can I ask a question? Sure, happy to. What formal education do you have? Plenty. I mean, formal education. Like if, if you're going to argue, if you're going to argue from authority, that's a logical fallacy. Tell me why I'm wrong. Don't tell me how many degrees you have. Don't ask me to change the conversation. I'm actually, I, I would, I would argue, I'm more informed because I didn't go to college and I've traveled the world, and I've met with world leaders, and I've read many books. So tell me, how am I oppressive? Can you name one example of how I'm oppressive? I can name a lot of examples. Can you name one? Name one example of how I'm oppressive, because you just said it. Well, no, they just don't have facts. Can you tell me one time that I've been wrong about anything I've said? Tell me a time that Israel has launched an offensive war. You, they didn't. They're, they're attacking Hezbollah. That was it's within their borders. It was to Lebanon. They don't just attack. Hezbollah, Hezbollah occupies southern Lebanon, which is Iranian-funded. Is it not? Really, I had no idea. Thank you for informing. Anytime. Me. Maybe so if you didn't go to college, you would learn more. Oh, you're so right. You're so right. Here, here's the thing. But like, IDF is a terrorist organization. How is the, I, the IDF is a terrorist organization? Yeah. No, according to a lot of people. Wait, hold on a second. The ID. But like a lot of countries around Why is it that they haven't built a new school or hospital in the last five years? Hundreds of millions of dollars pour into Gaza. It's because Hamas runs Gaza right now, and they're a terrorist organization. So Israel got out of Gaza in 2005 in the pursuit of peace. 10,000 Jews were actually forced out of their homes in the pursuit of peace. Gaza got more dangerous. It became a hot tub for terrorists. You know where Hamas's money is being spent? On terror tunnels and rockets being shot towards Tel Aviv. Where were those two rockets shot two weeks ago out of? They were shot out of Gaza. Yeah, two rockets. Oh, what's the big deal? Yeah, wh wh who cares when Jews have rockets shot at them, right? Because Israel is, is fighting a defensive right for its own national sovereignty. All Israel has done since 1967 is go backwards. All Israel has done. The UN sent an Asian diplomat, I forget his name exactly what it was, to go investigate crimes against humanity in Gaza. Israel did not allow him to enter Gaza because they said his visa wasn't valid. And that was published in an Israeli newspaper. Okay, so I'll have to look into that. If that's the case, then I'll, I'll say that you're correct. Um, but here's the question, though. So Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East right now. They're practicing democracy. Muslims, Jews, and Christians. Well, they, they, they can. Hold, hold on a second. Hold, hold, first of all, many Palestinians in Palestinian Authority that is in Zone B, not Zone A, can vote in elections. Secondly, 
secondly, here's the question. Do you want, so you want them to be able to vote both in PA elections and Israeli elections? Why hasn't the PA had an election in 12 years? Mahmoud Abbas is a dictator of the PA that uses the money and the aid that we give him to enrich himself. Oh, Mahmoud Abbas, hold on a second. Hold on. Oh, hold on, but I thought he was democratically elected. So why don't you guys have students against the Palestinian Authority, not students against Israel? The Palestinian Authority... Oh, I, 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 well, well, Palestinian Authority was democratically elected 12 years ago. Mahmoud Abbas has not had any checks and measures against him. In Nablus, he lives in a 25,000 square foot mansion. Here, here, here's the bottom line, is that Arabs are better served under Israeli government than under the Palestinian Authority government. Arabs are... I'm sorry, what? Yeah, wait, wait, I'm sorry, what? When they're in the ground dead, that's where a majority of Palestinians end up. What are you, a majority of Palestinians end up dead? How dare you say something like that? There's, there's 15 and a half million people that live in the Palestinian Authority. Half of them end up dead? So you're, you're trying to tell me that seven and a half million Palestinians have been killed? Is that what you're trying to say? I've never seen that number. Well, it's actually, actually 15 and a half million is if you count the PA and Israel together. You're right, it's more like, it's more of six million in Palestinian Authority nine and a half million in israel proper so it's about 15 combined so six million so you're trying to tell me three million people have been killed three million people have been killed by the idf that's not even close to being true yeah. so let me let me ask let me ask then build, build out that build it out for me so let me get this straight you, you you don't hate jews you just hate the jews right to exist in their homeland Okay. Wait, hold on a second. Wait, that's wait, wait, wait. a. They're not black. Yeah, exactly. Like, so that, that, that's one of the worst identity <laughs> politics <laughs> arguments. Just because I'm not something, it doesn't make me wrong. No, no, you're not. It's apartheid state of Israel. That's not. That's not in line with conservative politics. How's how so? Because there is no separation of church and state. Then why? Then why can? Let me ask you a question. Why can Christians freely practice their religion in Israel? But Jews can't freely practice their religion in the Palestinian Authority. How are Jews not practicing it? What happens if an Israeli citizen goes into a Bethlehem? What, what happens if a Jew goes into Bethlehem? What happens if a Muslim goes into Jerusalem? They can go to a mosque. That's what happens. Do you know what happens at Al Aqsa? You know what happens? Al Aqsa Mosque? Well, hold on a second. They have full access to the Al Aska Mosque. I was there myself. I was around 500 Muslims on the Al Aska Mosque. Hold on a second. Jews' heads are cut off in Hebron if they go to Hebron. Jews and Israelis are not allowed in Palestinian Authority. So I, I was in Hebron three weeks ago. You know what happened? If a Jew goes, if if a Jew goes to Hebron, their head will get cut off. Okay, so Jews are not allowed in the Temple Mount. You do know that, right? No, I'm saying Palestinians. Muslims going into Al-Aqsa. Right. So yes. I, it, it's very hotly debated. No, actually, when <laughs> no, I was is. there, I was praying at Al-Aqsa, and I saw is IDF soldiers coming in while I was praying. Did How they stop you? Did they stop you from praying? They they throw, like, tear grass. No, no they don't. Not the Al-Aqsa mark. Did they stop you from praying? I shouldn't be in fear while but I... But they don't do what you, you say they're doing. I'm just telling you it's not true. Not Did they? Finished. But I, I, I don't think you're representing reality. So let me ask a question. I I I I was there. You you should not be able to prove your religion. You should be able if a Muslim. Okay, that's a really interesting point. So Jews should be allowed on the Temple Mount. Cuz the Muslims don't allow them on the Temple Mount right now. So Jordanian control the Temple Mount. It was since the Prophet Muhammad, it was it was it was there since the Prophet Muhammad. Okay, so do you think it, here's the thing. So you think do you think Jews should be allowed on the Temple Mount? So you don't think it's a Temple Mount, because if you do, that's the very interesting thing. If you just say it's a Temple Mount, I, I'm putting you in a, admittedly, in a very difficult position, because Muslims do not recognize it as a Temple Mount. Right, they recognize it as their place of worship, and it's been that way since the beginning. No, it's been the Temple Mount since King David, thank you very much. So, I mean, you could say whatever you wanted to say. I, it's a huge point. It's actually, like, it's one of the biggest inhibitions of peace. I think that Jews and Muslims and Christians should all be allowed to go to the Temple Mount. Right now, Muslims do not allow Jews to go into the Temple Mount. One rabbi is allowed to go in once a year. That's it. That's, that, that's the treaty. Why is that? It's a, how is that fair? Why are Jews not allowed to go? But it's, I, I mean, Muslims are allowed to go to their holy sites. You just said you were allowed to go. I'll, I'll, and if, if that's the case, then I'll totally denounce it. But you, you are a living example that you were allowed to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, um, you know, 
Charlie, you know, laughing at the end really just took me because <laughs> Charlie is so patient. I don't know how he does it. And I don't know where this bunch of students come from. Like, is it like really that, you know, these college students, they, they stand for things that they do not have like complete knowledge about or like facts? Because look at how passionate they feel. Like it was, it was, I don't know. I felt a bit of hostility when they all kind of like tried to gang up on him with their, with their mismatch facts. Right. And I'm just wondering, like we do this, right. I go through these videos and it's like this same set of people with their like very impaired reasoning and, you know, very incomplete information. And I'm just wondering, do they like hand pick themselves or are they like in a, in a group? Because she is complaining <laughs> about something that she was led to do, right? He kept on asking her, were you denied prayer? Why couldn't she just say yes or no? Why was she just beating around the bush? And she was like, oh, I was literally there. Like, what are you fighting for exactly? I feel like people just need to calm down. Like, I know that what is going on in Gaza, it's inhuman, right? I Like, it's... It, it it's sad beyond like the, I don't even feel like that's a word that I do have to express how horrible this is and anyone who has a soul would understand and would know that and definitely would um you know just stand with these people who are suffering but doesn't mean that you shouldn't you know inform yourself about a whole lot of things like the inception of what is going on the difference between a war and a genocide, how a war is being started and how a genocide is being started. Like they have a lot to learn. And I feel like if they just keep on just believing, like just having this very limited information and just working with it, making, you know, letting it affect their emotions, it can be really dangerous because these people could, you know, they could go an extreme based on things that they don't even have enough facts about. Right. And I would, in a way, I would really give it to Charlie, you know, doing this because in a way he's going to be educating some of them who are open to be educated because, I mean, Charlie has this fact and he has this fact based on personal experiences, right? Like they're mentioning things happening in certain places. He's telling you, I was there, right? And the thing about these people is that they don't even want to learn. They don't want to listen. They just want to speak because why are you asking a question and an answer is being given to you and you're just, you know, disputing it and invalidating it. Like, so what exactly is your whole essence in being in that gathering? Like, what exactly are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to make Charlie, you know, turn over with his like with his with his stands with like your unlimited information and your your unlimited facts? Like it just isn't I don't know. And I, I just it's a whole lot. But anyways, we did get into this. I wonder what you all think about this down in the comment box. Please don't hesitate to engage me because this was this was the spice deal in the case. So please don't hesitate to engage me down in the comment box. I'm really gonna appreciate that. But upon to the right next one, people, let us keep on staying safe and healthy. If you know you do enjoy videos as such, please do not hesitate to like this video, hit the subscribe button, share this video, put down your comments and your opinions so that we can talk. And upon to the right next one, hopefully we'll get to see. Bye.